All right, everyone, thank you for joining us. My name is Dr. Bemis. I'm a chiropractor here at Lakeland Chiropractic. And today we're gonna to be talking about sleep and how important it is. So how did you sleep last night? According to the CDC, lack of sleep is becoming, slowly becoming one of the biggest public health epidemics in our country. It's estimated that one in three adults don't get enough sleep. Now some of the signs of not getting enough sleep would include poor work performance, mood swings, decreased alertness, low energy, increased signs of aging, brain fog, weight gain, and increased irritability. irritability. Now I don't know about you, but none of those things sound very fun. But if any of those ring a bell with you, maybe that can be traced back to the quality of sleep you're getting on a nightly basis. So by the numbers, it's estimated that 70% of American adults report that they get insufficient sleep at least one time a month. And roughly 11% report insufficient sleep every night. We'll talk about what a recommended amount of sleep, what an appropriate amount of sleep is for an adult in just a little bit. Now it's estimated that sleep related problems affect 50 to 70 million Americans of all ages. And at least 25 million Americans suffer from sleep apnea, which is a serious condition associated with cessation of breathing and cognitive impairment while sleeping. So what are some factors that affect sleep quality? Well, one of the big ones that's really becoming a problem today is the use of electronic devices before bedtime. Now, why may you ask? That's because the blue light from your screens has been shown to suppress melatonin release, which is the all-important hormone that supports proper and restful sleep. Irregular sleep patterns are another one. If you're going to bed, you know, it's really important to have a good routine when you sleep. You always hear about people trying to get their kids on a sleep schedule. Well, the same is important for adults. If you're going to bed at 11 o'clock one night, 6 o'clock the next night, staying up till 2 in the morning the night after that, your body's internal clock and circadian rhythm is off and your body can't figure out what the appropriate time is to go to sleep. Sleep apnea is another factor affecting sleep. This actually results in stopping of breathing briefly while you sleep and it can be associated with many significant risk factors. Anxiety or stress. This is another big contributor that keeps people awake at night. And finally, lack of exercise. If you're not exercising on a regular basis, you're missing out on a great outlet for, to burn off all that, you know, burn out extra energy, help deal with stress, and this will, will actually result in decreased ability to sleep better. So why is sleep so important? Well, the list is literally endless, but here are a couple of the big ones. It plays a role in memory and learning. It'll help boost your mood and balance your emotions. It'll promote heart health. It's actually believed that, it's found that your heart and your blood vessels relax a little bit and your blood pressure decreases while you're sleeping at night. And if you're not sleeping properly or not getting enough sleep, you're missing out on very important time for your blood vessels to relax and get a break. It'll enhance athletic abilities. It'll balance blood sugar. Good sleep will boost your immunity. When we sleep at night is when our bodies heal and repair themselves. So your, your immune cells need that time to rest and recharge. And lastly, it'll help with weight control. It's believed that if you get a good night's sleep, you're more energized and you're actually less hungry in the morning. So what are the main stages of sleep? Well, there's really four stages, but they break down into two primary groups. One is NREM, which consists of 75% of your night's sleep. And that's three stages, N1, N2, and then N3, 4. This really isn't that important, but I just want to note that N3 is the deepest and most restorative state of sleep. And this is actually when growth hormone is released, which is really important for growth and development. On the other end, you have REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep, and this is the other 25% of your sleep. It occurs around 90 minutes after you fall asleep typically, and then an REM, or REM cycle occurs every 90 minutes thereafter until you wake up. This is when your brain is most active and dreaming is actually able to occur and provides energy to the brain and body as well as supports daytime performance. So all those big benefits of sleep that we see on this slide right here happen during this stage right there, as well as some during the N3 where growth hormone is released. So it's actually recommended, according to the National Sleep Foundation, that an adult get anywhere from seven to nine hours of sleep per night on average. Now I know there are some nights where I might get a little bit more and then there are definitely nights where I get less but I usually try and keep it right around the seven and nine. And you'll notice infants need anywhere from 14, to, it's recommended 14 to 17, but sometimes as high as 19 hours of sleep per day. And then as you get older, that gradually decreases until you hit adulthood where you're recommended to get about seven to eight hours of sleep. So what are some tips to improve your quality of sleep? Well, number one, sleep on a good mattress that helps keep your spine in a neutral position. If it's recommended that we get eight hours of sleep per night, you would think we spend roughly one third of our lifetimes in bed. So we really want to take good care of our spine and our body while we're doing so. And one of the biggest ways to do that is to have a decent mattress that you're sleeping on. Now, if you're sleeping on a 10 year old hand-me-down spring mattress, it's probably time to upgrade because that's doing more harm than good. Your room should be as dark as possible. 
Any little bit of light can interfere with your body's ability to fall asleep. It'll interfere with melatonin release and result in decreased quality of sleep. And lastly, it's recommended to keep your bedroom at a little bit cooler temper temperature for more deep, restful sleep. I know my wife likes the room really hot and warm, whereas I like the room really cold. So it's kind of a, you know, we have to find that happy middle ground and compromise there. But it's recommended you sleep better and your body can regulate its temperature in a cooler environment. So we talked a little bit about mattresses and how important a good mattress is, and there are a couple main factors when selecting a good mattress. Now myself and the other doctor here get asked that almost weekly, what kind of mattress should I use? What do you recommend for a mattress? Quite frankly, I don't know. I'm not a mattress salesman, but I can offer a few tips that might help make selecting your next mattress go a little more smoothly. Number one, you need to take your sleeping position into, into account, and number two, the level of support that you need. So here are the four primary sleeping patterns, or sleeping positions. One of the most common is being a back sleeper. So back sleeping is great for keeping the spine in proper alignment if you have a decent mattress that will help support that neutral position. Side sleeping is probably the next, one of the next more friendly sleeping positions from a chiropractic and spinal health standpoint, but it's really important to have a mattress that's soft enough that gives enough cushion to keep that spine in neutral position. If you have a spine that's too, or excuse me, if you have a mattress that's too, too soft or too firm, that's going to create pressure points on the shoulders and the hips. We'll see that in the diagram in just a little bit. Then you have the fetal position. A lot of people sleep like this. It's recommended that people with spinal stenosis or facet issues, as well as osteoarthritis, find, act, find some comfort sleeping in this position as it helps reverse that lumbar curve and open the facet joints up a little bit. And lastly, stomach sleepers. Um, it's not recommended for everybody, but it's thought that people with degenerative disc disease can find some relief sleeping on their stomachs by increasing the lordotic curve in the lumbar spine. I'm actually a stomach sleeper and I'm trying to break myself of that habit. So mattress firmness and how it relates to sleeping position is really important as well when you're, when you're taking into account what kind of mattress you want to purchase. Mattresses are numbered from anywhere from 1 to 10, 1 to 2 being very soft, 9 to 10 being very firm. And you can see here the three primary sleeping positions and what they best align with in terms of firmness. I'm somewhere right around here and I like a five to six because that can accommodate pretty much all three sleeping patterns more comfortably. Now you notice a side sleeper needs anywhere from one to two up to maybe six to seven because that'll allow the proper cushion for their body and keep that spine in neutral position. A stomach sleeper needs a little bit more firm mattress so they don't have that bowing in the mattress that'll place extra strain on their low back. And then a back sleeper can be anywhere from a five to about an eight. So proper mattress firmness. You want your mattress to properly contour to your body shape, allowing natural spinal alignment. It should have optimal pressure distribution. You can see right here this lady's spine is in perfectly neutral alignment. So when you're looking at the spine from the back, you want it to be perfectly straight without any lateral curves in it. You can see right here this mattress is providing excellent body support for this young lady. The hips are in neutral alignment, the shoulders are where they belong, and that spine is nice and straight. If a mattress is too firm, you can see on this view right here how it's contouring to her body. Now a mattress that's too firm won't contour at all. So this is somewhere around your eight to nine on the firmness scale. You can see it's gonna cause a pressure point right here in the hips and pressure point right here in the shoulders. Now this is, if you're waking up with sore hips and sore shoulders in the morning and you sleep on your side, your mattress is likely too firm or your mattress isn't holding up anymore. On the other end of the spectrum, if you have a mattress that's too soft, it'll contour too much and you'll have this big sagging in the spine like that. And remember, a neutral spine should be perfectly straight whereas this one has a big C-shaped curve in it. The mattress will sag, it won't provide any support and it'll distort your spinal posture and ultimately you'll wake up in the morning with back pain. So to close, what are some tips for buying a new mattress? Number one, do some research before purchasing. Figure out what kind of sleeper you are. Figure out what kind of firmness you think you might need. Number two, talk to your doctor. Now I know your doctor typically isn't a mattress expert, but maybe they can provide some, you know, some insight based on what your spine looks like and what your posture looks like. Number three, be wary of gimmicks. There's actually no orthopedic board that certifies mattresses. So anything that says orthopedics, orthopedic on it, it's literally just, they're saying it's an orthopedic mattress. Number four, test drive your mattress. If you're at a mattress store, lay on the mattress for 30 to 40 minutes, see how it feels to your body. Number five, remember a firmer mattress doesn't always mean better. Number six, pillow tops aren't for everyone. If you have an old mattress and you just can't afford going out and buying, you know, a couple thousand dollar nice, comfortable mattress, 
a pillow top might be a great solution to get you through in the meantime to help soften up that mattress and give you a little bit more support. Number seven, ask about comfort guarantees or trials. I know a lot of the mattresses these days have 100 night sleep um, test drives that you can do where you get the mattress for 100, for 100 nights and if you don't like it, you send it back, they come get it. And number eight, protect your investment. So you wanna avoid getting any spills or stains as that will avoid the warranty. So I hope you learned a little bit. I hope this makes your mattress buying journey a little bit easier and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.